Hey guys, this is Incap24 from SmartMadden.com, coming back with another video out of this single back dice slot formation scheme series. Today we're going to be looking at cover 2 beaters and how to go ahead and attack those that use cover 2 as their base defense. We're going to show you 13 different plays with 40 different setups in order to go ahead and accomplish beating a lot of popular players that are using cover 2 as their base. A lot of people use that 4-3 under with that B-gap blitz. We're going to show you a formation under center um, with a conjunction of play action and um, slide protection. We're going to go ahead and block those blitzes and show you confidently how to go ahead and beat that cover 2 shell um, and be able just to get somebody out of their comfort zone. First play we're going to show you is the PA draw shot. This is a really simple setup. All you're doing is blocking your running back. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the middle so we can go ahead and show you what I do with my videos so you make sure if I keep it in the middle that means it's going to work anywhere. If I put it in the left hand side it only works on the left. If I put it on the right it only works on the right. What I mean by that is on the left hand side it's only going to work to the wide side of the field or the short side of the field depending which way I'm going with the ball and vice versa. So let's go ahead and show you here. This play will work anywhere. So all you're doing is blocking your running back. This B route is going to be unique where it's going to freeze that strong safety in the right-hand side, giving the opportunity for the X to go over the top for the easy score. So you can see here he freezes. Now we're going to throw it over the top. And unfortunately, that time, I just got a little trigger happy and threw it over the top a little bit there. So let's go ahead and try it again. Block that running back. All you're going to do again, just wait for that guy to stop there. And you're going to throw this ball over the top for the easy score to your player that's coming on that S route from the left hand side. The next thing we're going to do is going to take this tight end, we're going to move him uh, on an out to get that one linebacker out of the way, block that running back, and you're going to see that once he crosses there, you're going to go ahead and throw that easy throw for about 10-15 yards to your B receiver on that unique cross route. The next one we're going to do is we're going to put the A on an in, and then we're going to smart route him. Block your running back. What that's going to do is going to be able to get you some easy 10 to 12 yards throwing to the middle of the field because what happens with cover two is the two linebackers there unless there's a threat underneath them they continue to get depth and get in their back pedal the only threat that they're going to have um underneath right now the, the shortest route is the a route however the b route is a little bit deeper in the same exact spot which drives them to even go a little bit further so we're going to be able to get this a route underneath in front of that linebacker to catch that ball and get an easy 10 to 15 yards after you catch the ball the only thing you gotta worry about is a middle uh, linebacker user. So if he's usering in the middle, you may not want to go to that setup, but any other player, it's a great spot to get that yardage, right? So the next play we're gonna do is show you a play that um, against cover three and cover four is one of my favorite setups. What you do is put the A on a streak and you move him over, you put the Y on a curl, and you block your running back. It doesn't work as well in cover two, and I'll make sure you know that. The only reason why I say that is because the guy gets the ability to get bumped a couple more times than he does in cover three and cover four down the field, which slows down his route. So it takes a little bit longer to get the play to work, but I want to make sure that you know that it does work in case you have the time or if you misread the defense, you can still go to the same receiver. It just takes a little bit longer, so you're going to have to buy time a little bit more. So here we go. It's going to go to this B receiver as soon as he goes to the left-hand side. You're throwing it there, catches the ball, and see how he gets that catch and goes up the field. That's the way that it's designed to do it. You just got to make sure that you got enough time and, and um, to make it work, okay? The next one we're going to do is this unique cross route from right to left. In cover three, cover four videos, I showed you a different way to do it uh, as far as setting the, the routes up. But in cover two, you got to do it a little bit differently. So you move this guy over, right? And what you do is you put this X on a smoke screen and you put the Y on a streak. That's the setup. And you're going to have to pass lead the ball to the B receiver up the field in order to make this work. So you can see he's going to get the B here. Now you're going to pass lead it up. That was just a terrible throw. Let's try that again. It worked, but that's not what I want to do. I, I lobbed it, and I shouldn't have lobbed it. So let's try this again. X on of this, this on that. Okay, so move this guy over. Okay, so X on a smoke screen, Y on a streak. Move the B over. And what you're going to see, like I said before, you're going to see that you're going to be able to get this guy open on the left-hand side. You just want to pass lead it up, and that's the throw that you're looking for. Not that little balloon throw I threw earlier. All right, so the next one we're going to do is we're going to show you how to go ahead and use this wheel route to your advantage against cover two. So what you want to do first is put the B on a streak and you're going to move him over. By doing so, you're going to be able to get this uh, block your running back as well, get this wheel route on the left hand side um, open. The reason why that is is because in cover two, there's two safeties. One's got 
one half, the others got the other half. We're attacking that one safety, three different players on the left-hand side. The B and the X receiver are going to be threats before the Y will be, leaving the Y as the last possible guy he'll cover, giving that the player that we're going after. So the B is going to get down the field, as you can see here. And I'm just threw that ball way out of the pool proportion let's try that again now now you can do it two different ways here like this i'm just trying to do it without manipulating that's guy here so put this here move this guy over and you're going to see again here we're going to go to this wide receiver over the top to that player and get that ball down the line now i want to show you how to manipulate to keep that guy a little bit closer to the field okay by putting the x on a um smoke route and doing the same exact thing, you're going to see that one player that was covering him down the field is now going to stay there a little bit closer. And the B is still going to have that same opportunity to go ahead and get down the field and get the attention that safety first. Now you're throwing it to the Y. And you can see there that it's a little bit better of a um, to get away from the other guy, but the, but you're losing the one S route. So depending on how you want to work it, depends on how it is. Now, personally, for me, the more I am to the left-hand side, the better the wheel is going to work Um with the smoke screen, okay? So I just want to make sure that you know that. Um, you're going to see here because the B is going to be more in the the middle of the field when it comes to this guy's coverage. So he's got to cover it. Or if not, you're going to throw that ball right there in the middle and be able to get down the field with the streak. So you're really playing on that one free safety's momentum of where he's going to be in order of where you're going to throw it, but you're basically playing a 1-2 game with him. If he's not going to cover the guy, he's going to throw it to the other guy, but most of the time, the guys that I'm telling you on the play call sheet is the guy that he's going to jump based upon my findings. Your players might be a little bit different because of their speed, but just, you know, on all these plays, when I do the 1-2 combination, you're throwing it to the opposite of the guy the guy's jumping, all right? So the next one we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and show you how by moving this guy over, putting him on a streak after this, you know, we went ahead and showed you that you're going to hit the wheel. Now what we're going to do is going to show you that you can still hit that S route by doing it this way as well. So what you're going to see here is you're going to throw it over the top and be able to hit that S route down the field by mo motioning that guy over. Just gives it a different look. Is it going to the wheel? Is it going to the, the S route? Just kind of something different to make sure that you see that there's a couple different ways. Now, the next thing what we want to do is go ahead and um, show you one other look. And what we're going to do here is basically put the, the RB on a, on a streak, move him over, and put him on a feed. I showed you this in the Cover 3, Cover 4 videos, but it's also something that you can do against um, here to get that wheel well open. That time I uh, got stuff there. Okay, show the wheel around him. The reason why I do this, and you're going to have a hard time, I mean, a harder time getting the blocking because there's nobody back there, right? Um, you keep the, the A as, as a blocker, so you still got five, um, let me actually six blockers, but most people go ahead when you put the guy from on um, motion, they follow the running back because the running back is, at this point, a decoy, but a lot of people think, why would he put the, the, the running back that way? He obviously is going to use him for something, and unfortunately, you know, um, in this play, we're, we're not doing that. I misread my, my sheet, guys. This has to be on the left, on the right-hand side to make it work. And that's a good lesson for everybody. Make sure when you get these play call sheets, um, the ones that you can acquire at smartmadden.com, use them when you're labbing. Make sure that you look at the hash mark because the plays work based upon what I've labbed and I've shown you. So that play that wasn't going to work because I was putting it in the middle of the field when it is a... A, le a right hash only play because it does need the splits for it to work. Now, sometimes, you know, if you're looking at why my play is not working, just double check it. Make sure that you are getting um, exactly what it's supposed to be there, you know, because on the mi on the middle, it wasn't going to work because that the guy on the left-hand side wasn't getting open f uh, quick enough um, and the guy was coming over. But here, it's going to work because it hasn't. I'm just not making it work because I'm literally having a hard time getting the protection that I needed. To get it. So hopefully we'll get the protection this time. We do. And you're going to see that now the Y is going to be open, and now I can't throw it. Well, I'm going to move on to this play. Obviously, my execution is doing horribly, but you can see how open that play does get by using this route combination. and something different by getting the running back involved. All right, so we're going to get out of this PA draw shot. We're going to go into the PA look play. I really like this play. It's something that um, I've taught beats um, man coverage. It beats cover four, beats cover three. Now we're going to show you how to beats cover two. It's probably my favorite way to beat cover two, really really easily um, 
without um, and being able to like any type of blitzes because it's just such a simple setup. It's be on a fade. Okay, that's all it is. You can block your running back, uh, your your tight end. It doesn't matter. What you're gonna do here is when the Y does this S route, you're gonna cut off the play action. Y does this S route. All you're gonna do is lob it up to the middle of the field. You're pass leading it up and you're lobbing it up. It's such a quick hitter, guys, that a user player cannot really cannot um, go ahead and and defend this. Because you're doing here, you're faking their handoff. When you're here, you're throwing it over the top, and nobody is there for the easy score, guys. It's one of my favorite plays. It kills it all the time. All right, the next one we're going to show you on this is taking the B receiver, and we're going to go ahead and streak him, move him to left. And what this is going to do is it's going to show you that we're doing a... I'm going to block the, the tight end as well. We're going to go ahead and attack this left side with three different players. The X, do you see how it's got a nice little curve like on, on the um, fade route there? We're going to show you that here because we're going to use it later. But also on this play, we're going to see his, that guy's going to get down the field. And you're going to see that you're going to be able to throw this. See how of an easy just toss-up throw? Because that guy has to cover the right-hand side first before he calls the left-hand side, leaving the guy wide open. The next one we're going to do here on this is just on the right-hand side. Now, we're going to show you how to get the C route open. I've labbed this, labbed this, labbed this. There's only one way to get the C route open. Um, it's put the A on and out from the right side of the field or the short side of the field. It could be the opposite on the left-hand side. But um, you can't get this guy out open any other way against cover two except by doing this. Cut off the play action here. You can see here. Put that guy right there and get that C route really easily over there. That and that out is the perfect distance in order to make that work. Okay. And what also work, makes it work on that is that the Y receiver on the left hand side is getting that one strong safety um, back there. This freeze just a second because it's going into his alley, so we can get that B open. All right. So the next set what we're going to do is this one's going to be having to be having to work on the middle of the left hand side. It can't be on the right hand side. Is you can put the X. And we're going to motion the X to the right-hand side, okay? We're going to take the Y and put him on a fade. Put the A on a slant, the B on a fade. Okay, see how we got this now? Now what you're going to see is that the X and the B are going against that one safety. It's going to go to either one of them. Whatever he does not pick, it's going to the opposite guy, okay? So let's go ahead and show you exactly um, which one he's going to go here. We're going to take a look here. And that time we kind of just threw it up there because we were getting pressure. I thought I could lob it over the top, which I kind of did, but I un unfortunately did not get the um, get get the uh, arm strength on the ball because I was on my back foot. Let's go ahead and show it again. B on a fade, put the Y on a fade, and A on a slant. Okay, here we go. So now we're gonna do we're gonna cut this off, and this guy is just getting Coney Ely is just working my player here. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to slide to the right. Okay, I want to make sure that that guy does not get a little bit of protection that way. I can cut off the play action. I don't need the play action on this play. Um, it's just one of those deals that, you know, if you want to do it, you can. So here it is. We got a little bit better protection here. You're going to see the X is going to be wide open in the seam, and you're going to be able to get that ball right down the field on that. Now, if you want the ball to go to the B receiver, a lot of times what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll to the right. The reason why I do that is... When I roll a little bit to the right and get outside of the tackle box, that free safety, that uh, strong safety, however, has to make a decision quicker, and I can usually get it to the B receiver. So I'm going to get around the corner here. and See how he had to make a decision, and we could have got to the B receiver? So let's go ahead and show it to you one more time. So move this guy over. So we're going to get a the block there, and we're going to be able to get to that guy there because the guy goes and jumps the first guy down the field when you get outside that tackle box. So I want to make sure that you knew that. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to show this the Z under play. Now, Z under has a really unique tight end seam, and it's going to be very similar to the same type of setup that I was showing you earlier about making the guy decide which player he wants to go to. So here's the Z under, and what we're going to do with this play is we're going to take this A and we're going to motion him to the left-hand side. We're going to put the Y on a slant, the X on a fade, and... All right, so that's the setup right there. You see how unique that A is when you motion him from right to left? That's going to be the killer one we're doing. We're going to spread out the field with the B and the X, and we're going to go over the top to the A receiver as soon as he has that 
a step on that linebacker, and it's just an easy, easy um, play to go ahead and do it. This play is definitely one of those quicker plays to do it as well and be able to see how that works on that. Now, the next one we're going to do is just on the left-hand side, and we're going to use this to our advantage to get the left-hand receiver open. So we're going to put the same exact setup. Um, we're going to put the X actually on a streak this time, the Y on a slant, the uh, B on a streak, so two streaks instead of the fade this time, okay? Now we're going to go ahead and get this A. The A is going to get that free safety um, attention, and you can see as he jumps the free safety, actually didn't do it that time, um, and we're going to throw it to this guy. Most of the time he jumps, the, the free safety jumps that tight end, and what happens there is going to allow that one receiver on the left-hand side to get down the field for the for the catch down the sideline. Let's see if he does it this time. Is he gonna jump this guy this time? No, he's not jumping him. All right, so we're gonna keep on taking this until the guy jumps him. I wanna put the guy on a fade this time and see if we can, uh, maybe that's the case. X on a fade, Y on a streak, V on a streak, move this guy over, okay. So this is the setup. This time we're putting the X on a fade. I'll see if that slows him up a little bit and allows the guy to get the A. Most of the time he gets the A. I'm trying to figure out why he doesn't. That time he did. Okay. See how he jumped? He was going to jump the A. As soon as we see him jump the A, we're lobbing it to the X receiver. So let's try this one last time. By putting him on a fade, what you're going to see, like I said before, is the ability to get to the X receiver. So here we go. We got the timing. He jumps it. We're just throwing that over the top to the X receiver. As soon as we see that guy jump and go towards the middle, we're throwing to him. So if you want to play down the sideline, just put the guy on a fade. If you want the guy, if you want the tight end to be the guy you go to, put that guy on the outside when the ball's on the left hash on a streak. All right, so the next one we're going to go to is the PA tight end screen. Now, I showed you this in a cover four video. I showed you this on a cover three video. It works the same and almost even better against cover two. What happens here is what we're going to do is we're going to take this tight end screenplay, and we're going to flip it. Um, the reason why we flip it is because of the right-handed quarterback, because we're going to go ahead, we're going to cut off the play action, and we're going to fire it to the A receiver. What happens a lot on this play is that you're going to get some nice downfield blocking, you're going to get some pancake blocks by your two left, um, your two left linemen, and you're going to set the box up really well. So here we go, we're going to hike it off, and now you're going to see that this... Oops, just that time we didn't get the uh, the block that we're looking for. We'll show it to you a couple of times to make sure that we get it here. So we're cutting this off. We're firing this there. Now you got the blocks in front of you. See that wall of blockers? And you can see that I don't have a great tight end. It's kind of below average for Madden standards. And you're going to see that I still have the ability to make this work and get some extra yards. See the wall of defenders that I got? Um, and to get some really, really good yardage here. This is going to really frustrate your opponent, especially when you have all these other plays that you got in there. And you're going to be able to, to have this play work to your advantage. If you had a little bit better speed, a little bit more agility, you know, a guy that's actually a receiver first type player, um, you're going to see that this play is really going to be able to go ahead and really do well. I got to see this play again. I know I'm a big Falcons fan, and uh, I got to see Jake Matthews here. He just leveled Josh Norman. Um, and this is the type of fun plays that you'll see. Um, off this play here, and if I can get this guy right there, yep, watch him, and you're putting a lineman on a cornerback, and I'm not making fun of Josh Norman here, but this is what happens on any DB, you got a lineman on him, and you just, just get leveled, right, and a lot of times that, that does, it allows him to, I mean, he, he hits him running, and gets to the next level, you know, a lot of times that's what happens with this, and you get that extra block. Just want to make sure you see that. That's why it's a really fun play. Make sure you throw that in your arsenal. Um, it gets all zone coverages, right? So let's go ahead. The next play is a PA corner post. And what we're going to do here is show you how this is a really, really simple um, setup as well that we're going to be able to beat cover two by doing a simple adjustment on the first setup. All you're going to do is block your running back. And you're going to do the same thing you did before. You're going to pass lead it up to this Y receiver as soon as he has the ability to get past those guys and see how that does it. And that just opens up and gets it over the top of those linebackers for the easy score. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the X, you're going to put him on a streak, you're going to take the A receiver, you're going to motion him to the left. And what we're going to do here by doing it this way, you're going to see that um, you're going to be able to get this post to be open as well. So you're going to hear, you're going to cut off the play action. And I just got crushed there. They must have watched my video. 
you know, I make fun of Norman, and now they're coming at me. Let's try this again here. Move this over here, put this X over here, and now we're going to go to the Y receiver again, like I was saying before. We're going to cut this off, and you're going to see that you're going to be able to throw this over the top to the Y receiver, and it's just the same way to do the same play, just a different look to it, okay? The next one we're going to do, and it's going to be on the right side only, we're going to take this... Um, X receiver, I'm going to put him on a fade, put the A on a slant, and move this B receiver over, okay? What that's going to do is if the player follows him, okay? See how we followed him there? That means they didn't base the line. The player that's going to be open is going to be the Y receiver. So if the guy follows, you're going to the Y. If he doesn't follow, you're going to the B, all right? So here it is. Cutting this off. You're going to see that the Y is going to cut over across the field, and you're going to see that you're going to be able to catch it this way and be able to get down the sidelines for the easy score if you time the play correctly. The next play you're going to show is, all we're going to do is, this is going to be from the middle of the field only, okay? Um, it's going to be, we're using that one tight end route to our advantage. All we're doing is putting the Y on a zig. We're going to cut it off, and you're going to see here, throw this ball over the top to this corner right there. I like to use this play a lot of times around the 20-25 yard line for the touchdown. It's just a nice red zone play when in that area um, because of the way the commotion is, all right? The next play I'm going to do is called PA Stretch. This is going to be an only on the left-hand side of the field, um, unless you flip it, but the, the wide side of the field. And the reason why this play really works well against cover two, and I get a lot of success to take this all the way to the house um, by the way we designed this play, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this one unique corner route here, this red route, and try to do the best we can to get him wide open. And the way we do this is we put the A on a streak, we put the RB on a wheel, okay? And we make ourselves vulnerable for the A gap, B gap blitzes, not having this extra protection there. So we're going to take this Y, and we're going to motion him to the right-hand side and hike it just past the center. And you're going to see here that the B is going to be wide open. You're going to go ahead and pass lead it up. And I don't know why he went ahead and did that little animation. You want to pass lead it up so that he can get down the field. So let's go ahead and now that I've shown it to you, go ahead and show it to you again here. Move it over. And what you're going to see on the wide side of the field, it's going to kind of... And you can see how nice and easy that play gets open because of the delayed route on the cover two to the wide side of the field. That's just a great cover two beater that you want to put in your arsenal right away. All right. Um, I don't like that play against a whole lot of other things, but that's a great cover two beater. And I want to make sure you saw that. Next play we're going to do is called the X under. And what we're going to do is we're going to start on the right-hand side because the first play is just a right-hand side only play. And it's a, one of those plays, again, that we're going to go ahead and use the one, two, going after the safety, uh, making him make a decision of which way he wants to go. Okay, so here's the X under right here. And you're going to see this really unique route here. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you that you're going to put the B on a fade, the X on a fade, and you're going to block your running back. So what you're going to see here, you're going to see the A and the B are the manipulation routes. Okay, Which way we're going, depending on which way the guy goes. Okay, So here we go. You're going to see that the guy's widening it out a little bit, and you're going to throw it right down the middle, and you get the easy catch on that first way. Now you can also do, to make sure that kind of gets what you want out of it, is you can go ahead and in the middle of the field, what I like to do is I like to take the same route, and I like to take the tight end and motion him to the right-hand side. By doing so, put the B on the fade, and say the same thing, X on a fade, block your running back. Um, that's going to give you the ability to go ahead and get a different angle from this guy, and it kind of just opens that up a little bit, right? See how that was just a little bit easier of a throw over the top just because of the way it angled? If you also want to do, you can move this guy over, um, Oh, I didn't mean to do it that way, but either way, it doesn't matter. You do it like this, and you put the B on the fade. If you move this guy over, a lot of times what you can do is you can manipulate that one strong safety. If you roll and get outside of the tackle boxes, it seems to me that the safety makes his decision quicker. So if you have that ability to get outside, that's how I'm not going to. Oop. Got, got hit there. Let's try this again. If you're able to get outside, what you're trying to do here is make the guy decide which way he wants to go first. Okay, that time, I'll throw the ball out of here. Um, it didn't work because I didn't, I didn't do what I wanted to do. What I wanted to do here was move this guy over, okay? Let me just get out of this. All right. And now we're attacking the guy, two people on the left, on the right-hand side, right? So what we're going to try to do 
is if we get to the outside of the field, I'm trying to teach you this here, you can have to, he has to make a decision quicker, and that time I just did a bad throw, but a lot of times when he makes the decision, he's always going to go to the left receiver, and the reason why he does that is because he's the one that's down the field quickest, and I can get that throw down the sideline a little bit quicker to my number one receiver by doing so once I get outside the tackle box. So I get outside the tackle box, now he's going to make the decision. That time he made the decision to the B, I'm throwing it to this guy. So if you have an agile quarterback, somebody who has a little bit more speed, you can definitely use this play to get outside the box and get that play to work for you. Okay. So the next play we're going to show you is the double sluggo. All right. This is a play that I've shown you against cover three. That's a killer from the middle of the field. And I'm going to show you uh, a cover two from the middle of the field and then how to beat it from the left and from the right all the same. All right. So here we go. First thing I'm going to do is from the middle only. Let's go find the sluggo play real quick. Okay. From the middle only, what we're going to do is show you that when you put the Y. Okay, it says here. A on a streak. I'm sorry. A on a streak. Block my running back. And I'm going to put the Y on a slant. Okay. What's going to happen here is we're going to go to this X receiver on the sluggo here, okay? So let's go ahead and show it to you. I don't know what I just did. I wrote this down wrong. And I got to remember how this works. Oh, let's try it again here. Here we go. Yeah, that's how it works. Okay. You're going to see from the middle of the field, and this is going to be kind of weird, and this is why it wasn't making sense to me. What happens is I want to go ahead and make this A go on a streak, block my running back, the guy is going to follow the um, the A receiver. Watch the left guy. He goes and follows the F receiver, and we can throw this ball over the top to the left to that receiver. I know I kind of messed up saying that, and that's why it was kind of funny when I was reading my notes, but I had to remember the play. So basically what happens is this. By putting this guy in the A down the streak right here, and this guy is already doing the sluggo, this guy goes to this guy, right? This guy is wide open in the middle for some reason, this guy, because there's no threat here for him yet, he goes and takes one false step that way. As soon as I see that false step, I'm throwing this ball over the top over here, right? So let's get out of this camera angle. Taking forever on this camera angle. All right. So, you know what? Let's get out of this camera angle. Let's try this again. So what happens here, if you see my player, as soon as I see this guy jump to the right, I'm throwing this over the top. You see how I just threw that, just a lob? Doesn't matter. Over the top to that guy for an easy catch, okay? So that's how it works in the middle of the field. Now, on the left-hand side of the field, it's going to be that I'm going to go to the right guy. So I'm put the uh, A on a streak. And you're going to see the same exact thing here. The guy's going to catch this ball. And I'm going to be able to lob it over there. I kind of got hit when I threw it. But you're going to see that you're going to have that same ability to manipulate those safeties, the opposite of this side that you're on. So if he's on the left side, oop, you're going to be able to go ahead and throw it to the right receiver. If you're on the right side, you're going to be able to throw it to um, the left receiver. So here it is. And you're going to be able to throw it to that side for the same pass, the same exact way against cover two. So just know that opposite side of, of, of where you are is the, the guy you're throwing to. So... And then you can go ahead on the right side. You can go ahead and you can throw it to the um, <coughs> the um, the tight end here. So what we're going to do here, you can see that the tight end is going to be open here. And you can just pass lead it in. I just messed up on that. Um, <laughs> I didn't click over to that player. But you can see that you can pass lead it in on the right side here because that's what the side – the side that the player is going to be on, um, you're going to be able to go ahead. You can do the same thing I did before if you want, where you can go ahead and roll out to the right a little bit and then go there. But the problem that i got going on right now, and I, I forgot to tell you guys this, this play is just a one-step drop. So you have to motion your guy back with your quarterback. So if I don't, I'm stopping right there, right? But I have to go backwards. So that's kind of giving me a – I'll just kind of show it to you here. A funky animation that I wasn't expecting because I forgot about. That's what it does. So make sure that you you auto drop. You make yourself drop by your you know um, manually. So here I'm doing myself. I'm back. I'm going backwards. And now you can see that 
I went ahead and picked the wrong guy, but because of the hesitation that you can be able to hit either player on this play, just pick your guy and, and go with it. Um, most of the time on the right-hand side, it's going to go to um, the tight end, however. Let's get out of this play. Let's go to um, the next play. It's called Middle Slants. Middle Slants is your audible. I'm going to show you how to beat cover two with it. Um, I like it because it's in your audibles. So what you're going to do with this play is you're going to go ahead and put the Y on a fade put, and put the A on an out route and motion them over. So basically, I put them on an in and I motion them because it turns into an out. But that's what you want to do and you want to block your running back. What you're going to see here is that this X receiver is going to be wide open against right there, that little hole in that little pocket for an easy first down. This is one of those plays that I go to when I need a quick throw um, and I need it to be something that I need to... Oh, I didn't do it that time. I'll just throw it right there. Um, because you got that that slant from the right side. So a lot of times what people are thinking is that that's the player that they have to cover manually because if they jump the left side, that right that one guy is going to be open. I don't know what I'm doing here. Let me go ahead and get that middle slants back out. Move this guy over. And what you're doing here, put him on an out, the Y on a feed, block your running back. So you've got the backside slant there in case they jump the left-hand side of the field. But however, that's where that little pocket right there is going to be where you want to throw it for cover two beater. Okay. The next one we're going to do is also in your um, audibles. It's called PA Comeback. And what we're going to do with this player is going to take the X on a fade. And we're going to block our running back. What you're going to see is we're going to do a one-two with the seam. See that seam route? That X route on the left-hand side is going to get down the field quicker. So now you're just throwing it over the top to the seam for an easy cover two killer. All right? That's another audible play that you can go ahead to when you see cover two and say, let's just do it. Let's dial it up and go. The next audible play is going to be called slot cross. Well, slot cross, what we're going to do is be able to put the X on a streak. We're going to put the A on a fade. And we're going to be able to motion this guy on the on the B to the left hand side. All right. Actually, you know what, guys? This is on the slot cross. I'm sorry. It's supposed to be on the left side only. It won't work if it's not. So let me go ahead and show it again. So X on a streak, A on a fade. Move this guy over. And block your running back, okay? Oh, I didn't, I didn't even pick slot cross. I hate when I do that. All right, let me try this one more time. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to make it go quicker by using the audibles instead of going and picking the play. I'm just messing up. So let's try it again. On the left-hand side, we're blocking a running back. We're moving this guy over. And we're putting the X on a streak and the um, A on a fade. Okay, so that's the setup. Now, what you're going to see on this setup is that you're going to see um, the streak on the X side get open because the B is going to be the guy that pulls it. So let's go ahead and watch this now. So you're going to see that the, P's, the B is going to pull that route. And see how he pulls that? We're going to throw that over the top. That's how I kind of... Um, did a really bad pass because I, I kind of wanted to go and make it look like it was going to be a real um, home run throw. It's really not supposed to be a home run throw. This one's actually only supposed to be um, a bullet pass to your X receiver as he passes that player. As soon as the guy jumps it, see how the B is going to get jumped? Now you're bullying it there. I didn't wait. I waited. I didn't wait long enough. But um, you kind of do that one too. And this play does work, and I want to make sure that I show it to you. You can see the, the thought of how it's going to work. I just need to get the execution down. All right, so X on a, um, a streak, A on a fade. Okay, let's try this again. All right, so that B is going to get down the field. Now you're going to throw it to that player down the field. So the first time I, I timed it right, I just threw the wrong throw. The second time I didn't time it right, but I did the right throw. The third time I got it right. All right, so that's how it works. This time, way well, you could see if you're messing it up, that's why you're messing it up. Now the second one uh, setup um, that's on the left hand side, you put the Y on a streak, and you motion him to the right. Okay, and then you put the A on a slant. Oh, I did it again. Right, let me get into slot cross. All right, so you're going to go ahead on the Y on a streak and move him over. On a streak, move him over. All right. The A is going to be on a slant. You're going to block your running back. Okay. So here's the play. You can see on the right hand side, you've got the B and the and the Y doing uh, a streak and a fade together, right? Well, that's going to do on this is going to be able to get this fade open because the Y is going to get down the field first, and you're going to be able to throw this ball right there easily against cover two. 
The last one here is going to be on the right side or in the middle. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to throw it in the middle over there. And you're going to see that the... Um, you can go ahead and put the A on a flat. And you're going to go ahead and put the B and motion him to the left-hand side. And block your running back. We're going to go ahead and hit this um, Y receiver over here on the right-hand side on the cross. As he crosses everybody, you're going to see right here, you kind of just throw a little, little lob pass right there. It's a nice 15 to 25 yard gain, you know, if the guy doesn't make any moves and break any tackles. Alrighty, so that is um, a slot cross play. The next play we're going to do is a wide receiver screen play. Alrighty, now I want to show you how to make this play work. Um, I prefer it to go to the wide side of the field, but I'm going to show you three different ways to make a wide receiver screen play work. As is is the first one, okay? It works well the way it is to the wide side of the field, but I want to make sure that it works everywhere, but it works best to the wide side, right? So here it is, this wide receiver screen play. So the first thing we're going to do against cover two is just call it as it is and make it work. So all we're doing is hiking it. We're throwing it to the B. You can see you got a couple guys out there. You can see that it works pretty decent as long as you get around there. I run a couple times so you can see it this way. Um, but you can see that you got lead blockers as long as you got, you know, kind of get that ball through there. You should be good. You already know Peanut Tillman wants to knock the ball out. Now, the second way is even a little bit better, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to motion this Y to the right. And what happens when it does that is that everybody backs up. It's cover two. So they're going to back up a little bit, giving us a little bit more room to get the B receiver. So you can back it up. They're going to throw this right here. Now you're going to see that you got a little bit more. Like I did a nice block shed. But you can see that you have more running room. Um, let me show it to you with some more success here. But you're going to see that even though we moved that guy over, um, you're going to see that you get some more running room because of the way you have this ability to, um, uh, to read your blocks a little better. I'm doing really a bad job of actually having any type of success of, of maneuvering, but you can definitely see that with any type of screen, really what you want to do is be able to have room to run and then let yourself do the ability to get from there. Um, Tillman's doing some nice block shed over there because Hankerson's not a great blocker. So I'm going to show you the second route, which is taking the X over there. And what this is going to do is going to jam the guys more to the right and you have an extra blocker literally on this. Okay, so what's going to happen here, throw it there. Now you got that extra blocker to the outside and that's the, ooh, again, Charles Tillman doing that to me. Let's try this again. <laughs> but you can see there, when you move this guy over, he becomes a secondary block to where when he gets to the outside, he's going to go third level to the free safety. And this is my favorite way of doing it, right? So here it is. You get that extra blocker out there. Now he's got the block. Get away from Tillman <laughs> and get around the corner. So you can see by just doing that little adjustment on this play, uh, you're going to be able to get that extra blocker. So you're literally going to have the two guys on the right-hand side, the tight end and the right tackle, and this guy. So you're going four on four now with blocking. And obviously, that's exactly what you want to happen. And as long as you get around that corner, you're going to have a little bit better success. So the last play here on this video, guys, is the Z spot play. We'll go ahead and show it to you right here. And what you're doing here is, let me get out of here. It's just going to be a real simple three to five yard play. Um, it's not. It's probably the least glamorous out of all these plays, but it's a really nice um, play to get a first down because a lot of people go to cover two on short yardage plays. And let me show it to you right here. And all you're going to do is do a simple setup is put the Y on a slant. By doing so, you're going to drive the guys a little bit further back. And you're just going to hit this um, little hitch route right here. And for the easy three to five yards, it's a real nice play to be able to get that quick yardage when you need that first down. So I appreciate you guys watching this video. I know it's a little bit lengthy, but it definitely hit all those cover twos. Hit our um, website out at smartmadden.com. Grab yourself a play sheet. Take it into the lab. Use it during the games. You're really going to use... Um, really see that when you have something physical in front of you, being able to learn the plays as you go really does help your game get elevated. So like I said, hit that up. I appreciate the follow.